Hello and welcome to GameSack. This week we're going to take a look at two series of games that at one point could have had some great potential. Indeed, these are games that these are games, yeah, well, these are games that, you know, they just stopped making for some reason. We've got two series to look at. We've got Act Razor and Alex Kidd. So, which one do you want to look at first, Dave? Hmm, let's play a game of rock paper scissors and whoever wins decides. Okay, let's do it. Ready? Oh, three. that's a scissor. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, how am I, I going to write with that? I don't care. Anyway, <laughs> anyway which series is it going to be first? Well, I think we'll stay with the Nintendo one and look at ActRaiser. Of course, I could have guessed with a giant Super Nintendo back there. Oh, that's awesome. I know, isn't it? <laughs> How'd that get there? That's I don't cool. know. ActRaiser is an early Super Nintendo game by Enix. This game is a mix of a god civilization builder game and platform action game. It works out really well in my opinion. Oh, I definitely agree. The way the game plays out is really intriguing. You start out as a god who has lost his powers. You don't actually play the god character, but you take control of an angel to help you in civilization aspects. During the 2D action aspects, you can take control of a statue that comes to life. You start out with an action level that is a 2D side-scrolling action platformer that ends with a boss battle. These levels are typically very good looking and have some decent music. Decent? The music is awesome, man! It is awesome, minus the reverb. Anyways, the control of your character is good, but not perfect. He does everything, but cannot turn in mid-air to attack. I personally feel that the controls are great. My only problem with them is that you crouch momentarily when you land from a jump. Yeah, that does kind of suck. Anyway, once the boss is defeated, it's time to build the civilization. Scattered across the world map are demon regenerators. Your goal here is to direct the puny humans to these regenerating points so they can seal them up and stop the monsters from reappearing. Lots of monsters will appear, but you can kill them with your bow and arrows. As a god, you can create natural phenomena such as rain, wind, lightning, and earthquakes, which help shape the landscape to help people better themselves and multiply. That's actually how you gain levels. The game is fairly easy your first time through, but once you defeat the final boss, you unlock a professional mode which consists of only the action scenes without any magical assistance. The enemies are tougher to defeat as well. This is the mode I like playing the most, and hopping around with the great jumping control is tremendous amounts of fun for me. The music is by Yuzo Koshiro, so you know it's good. The only downfall is that it has the reverb the SNES is known for. The reverb in some areas is pretty bad, yeah, but I think the music is tremendously well done and impressive, especially for such an early game. This game is a requirement for anybody's Super Nintendo collection. ActRaiser 2 was released in the year 1993 by Enix and it removed all of the RPG elements entirely. Yep, the god segments are gone. Apparently people complained that they wanted an action only game of ActRaiser. While in theory this sounds nice, in reality it sucks. I really don't think that's why the game sucks, Dave. You're right, that's not why, but let me tell you. The charm of the first game was the yin and the yang, the sim and the action. Now all we have is the action, and the action is horrible. Yeah, that's why the game sucks. So anyway, you control the statue just like in the first game. There is a world map, but it's very limited and only there to take up space. Once you get into one of the 2D action scenes, the game turns into a giant dog turd. The control sucks massively. Yeah, I wonder if the programmers ever even played the first game with its awesome control. I know. This time around, your player has wings. The wings let you glide for an extra air time, but they also make your double jump impossible to control. Once your wings come out, you glide like a little fairy while all enemies are having their way with you. It takes extra button pushes to stop the glide, and this is very annoying. Your character also moves at a super slow pace. I mean, it's just horribly slow. There's no running, no nothing of speed of any sort in this game to your character. The game has some really nice graphics and colors, but that is only one third of the equation. The other two, music and gameplay, decided to take the day off. Yeah, Yuzo composed the music while he was in a coma or something. He might as well be dead because the music is way below his level. It's battling beyond Oasis for worst Yuzo score ever. I don't know about that. Streets of Rage 3 still might be his worst, though so this was definitely a bad time for Yuzo.
And that's ActRaiser for you. Joe, why do you think they stopped making ActRaiser games? Well, Dave, you know, the original, they sold about 600,000 or so copies worldwide. You know, that's pretty good, but it's yeah. not amazing. And despite putting 100% pure action and excitement right on ActRaiser 2's box, it only sold about I'd say a third of what the original did, so it just kind of fizzled out. Yeah, that's a shame. And, but despite that, you know, I'd really like to see another proper ActRaiser game. And why do you think they stopped? Well, my guess is because ActRaiser 2 was pretty much a big turd, that's why. <laughs> True, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, well, we still have one more game to cover, and what do you think? Should we do another game of rock, paper, and scissors and see what it is? No, don't be stupid. All Let's right. just take a look at Alex Kidd. Okay. Alex Kidd and Miracle World is one of Sega's first attempts at a proper mascot and was released in 1986. It's pretty clear that Sega intended him to compete directly with Mario's popularity. But is Miracle World a game that stands up to the original Super Mario Brothers? Well, yes and no. First of all, it is a much more complex and full game than Super Mario Brothers. This might be, but Mario Brothers was an arcade game designed to eat quarters and be fun for short periods of time. Yeah, anyway, you don't just go to the right and try to avoid things, but you can get many different items to help you, the screen scrolls vertically on occasion, and you can even get to play rock, paper, scissors. Alex himself is sort of a half-human, half-monkey kid in a red jumpsuit. I think he's just a kid who came from a really bad gene pool and looks like he's half-monkey. Yeah, as a character, he's not tremendously appealing. So how's the game? It's not bad. The first thing you'll notice is that the jump and punch buttons are backwards. A lot of early Master System games were like this and it has always driven me nuts, even back then. You can punch blocks and get money and items. But be careful about punching the question mark blocks though, as a ghost may appear. If he does, he'll chase your ass until you get him off the screen. Then he conveniently forgets that he was even chasing you and suddenly you're safe. You know, just like a real ghost. Also, this game is full of one-hit deaths. This sucks. They should have let him get a power-up like Mario. Fortunately, you usually start out right where you died. The rock, paper, scissors matches are called Jonkin. Lose a match and you die. Why this was included, I don't know. The game itself is fairly fun, but the control is so fast and slippery, I really feel it does more to bring the game down than to help it. There are also some points in the game which will require you to do things in a certain order to get past that you'd never know without consulting a strategy guide or an FAQ, and that brings this game down even more in my opinion. I agree totally. Are we supposed to have some sort of ESP to tell us to do completely random things that make no sense whatsoever just to get past a certain part in a level? The graphics are pretty good and there's lots of variety for a game with only one mega power. The music seems cute at first, but the main theme can get annoying rather fast. But the other music, it fits the game pretty well. This game would eventually be included with the Master System 2 as a built-in game. Kid The Lost Stars was released in the arcades also in 1986. It's absolutely nothing like Miracle World at all. Your goal is to run from left to right, avoiding things in order to capture the miracle ball at the end of the stage. You have a certain number of lives and it is very easy to die. If you touch anything, and I mean anything, Alex lets out a girly scream, but you pick up right where you left off, unless you fall into a bottomless pit, that is. <laughs> I hate to admit it, but I think Mario's crying baby in Yoshi's Island is still more annoying. This game is designed to eat quarters and nothing more. Um... Alex Kidd The Lost Stars made it home to the Master System in early 1988. It has two mega power, and sadly this would be as large as any Alex Kidd game would ever get. Obviously the graphics are somewhat compromised, but it remains a very colorful game. The voice before each stage is still here. I'm the Miracle Ball. And so is Alex's scream. I'm impressed by this added agony when Alex gets hit, though it also makes me want to do good and live. Yeah, anyway, this version doesn't have a limited amount of lives like the arcade version did, but rather an overall life bar which slowly depletes unless you pick up the SC icon which adds to it. Your goal is to collect the 12 different points on the Zodiac or something like that. 
I'm not really into astrology, so I really don't know anything about that kind of stuff. Well, Joe, each symbol represents a point in the calendar on the constellation, like Cancer or Aries, Scorpio, Sagittarius. Yeah, whatever. Once you reach the end of the seventh stage, you get a fake ending, and I guess they're parking the Statue of Liberty in the middle of space now or something. Anyway, after that, you start all over again with increased difficulty and more enemies. This is actually closer to the arcade version when you get to this point in the game. Uh, yeah. The music isn't bad, but you don't want to listen to it for too tremendously long. Hey, but the game has digitized voices. This is very impressive for a game from 1988. I am impressed. While the gameplay isn't super awesome, the game does have a certain charm to it that I like. The cute graphics and the simple music, just good wholesome fun. Hey, I feel like eating some apple pie. Overall, it's a decent but easy game, but completely different than the first. Alex Kidd and High Tech World strays even further from the series' roots. Basically, you hear that there's a new arcade in town you want to go, but the map to the arcade has been torn in pieces, and each piece is scattered throughout the castle. <laughs> what, I guess they didn't have Google Maps back then? This game was originally based on some random anime called Anmitsu Hime, I don't know, it's in Japan, but they crammed Alex Kidd in here for the US release. Anyway, your first goal is to find and assemble all the different pieces of the map by wandering around and sometimes performing menial tasks. If you pass a test, you get a piece. If you talk to your parents, you get a piece, and so on. But be careful. This game is full of traps that will result in an instant game over. Once you collect all the pieces, you go outside to an action scene where you fight ninjas. Oh wow, actual action. Man, it is about time. It's pretty tough, and once again, you've got one hit deaths, which result in an instant game over. The graphics are very minimal. That's an understatement. They're a bit better when you get outside, but that's not saying much. The music is also pretty basic and not very good. I think the sound effects of the ninjas getting hit sounds like an NES sound effect, though. Overall, it's definitely the worst game in the entire series. Alex Kidd BMX Trial was never released outside of Japan. Basically, Alex is a BMX bandit as he races through different courses. It requires a Sega paddle controller, which was never released here, so I'm forced to use a Sega sports pad in sports mode in an attempt to control it. It works better than the normal controller, but not by much. Oh, I'll bet it works fine. Uh, you're just not very good at it, Joe. Well, maybe. You go over jumps and do wheelies and whatnots, and it seems kind of simple from what I've played of it. Nothing really special happening here. Alex Kidd in the Enchanted Castle was his first and only appearance on the Genesis. Here the gameplay finally returned to its roots, but they went overboard with the Jankin in this game. For example, in order to buy anything, you must first beat the shop owner in a rock, paper, scissors match before you can pay and take the item. You know, it wouldn't be so bad if rock, paper, scissors wasn't so random. All of the items have returned to help you on your quest. The game is more straightforward this time without any of the cryptic nonsense from the first game. There are more hidden areas as well, at least that I've found. You can no longer punch in midair, but you do have a constant drop kick going on while you're airborne. The control is pretty slippery, but it's nowhere near as slippery as the first game's control, thankfully. The one hit deaths are still here though. The graphics have been substantially improved and the music is also better. Well, unless you're in the pedicopter. The main theme is just as ridiculous, however. It all still seems pretty weak for a Genesis game, though. It's definitely not the killer app that the Genesis needed early in its life. Alex came back for one more game in 1990 called Alex Kidd and Shinobi World. This game is almost a parody of the original Shinobi. I approve. 
Yeah, in fact, there's more Shinobi in here than Alex Kidd. I mean, Alex is the star, but the gameplay feels more like a hyper-cute version of Shinobi. The only thing that seems Alex Kiddish besides the main character is the ability to crush blocks. Anyway, this time, Alex has a sword and you go out murdering ninjas in an attempt to reclaim your captured girlfriend. The gameplay is pretty fast, and for the first time ever, Alex can take more than one hit before he dies. The levels are also strewn with hearts, so you can beef up your life bar. The controls are really good as well. Alex can bounce off walls and do a fireball thingy which zips him across the screen in any given direction. It's a really fun game. This is a fun game. The levels are harder than the boss fights, which are a complete joke, really. Yeah, but I like how the first boss throws fireballs at you and then shrinks before he dies, just like Mario. In fact, there's a lot of Mario in this in this game. From these things, to these things. I like that there are hidden areas as well. Yeah, this game has it all. It only has four rounds though, and three stages each, so it's pretty short, sadly. The graphics are pretty damn good for an 8-bit game, and I like all of the Shinobi love. The music is great for the most part as well, mainly paying tribute to Shinobi and none to Alex Kidd. The last level music isn't so great though. Overall, this is the best game ever made associated with Alex Kidd. And so Alex Kidd rides off into the sunset. It's really a shame too, as Alex Kidd and Shinobi World, it was a fantastic game. They finally got it right and then they just stopped making Alex Kidd games altogether. <laughs> yeah, come on though, Joe. I mean, you can't keep making Alex Kidd when Sonic is on Sega's payroll. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my guess is Alex Kidd is sitting behind a counter somewhere selling Sonic memorabilia. <laughs> Probably true. Anyway, they could have continued to make good Alex Kidd games like they did with Wonder Boy. Oh, well. Yeah, they could have, but his uh, days are sadly numbered to just cameo appearances here and there. Yeah, so. probably true. But you know what else won't die? What's that? Rock, paper, scissors. It's true. You want to play another round? Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, give yeah. me some knucks, yeah. <laughs> Play some real rock, paper, and scissors, Joe. This is the best one I out guess. there. What? Sure, I All guess. Right, here we go. I can't skip this. No. Oh, okay. I guess I'll I'll press now. Oh. But she's dancing right. again. Yeah, right, watch. She's I can't. Hot. I can't skip this. No, uh, uh, you don't want to skip this. She's hot. <laughs> Jeez. Press A. Press okay, A. Okay. Now. Yeah! Oh, yeah. You only have to do that about 20 more times, and then she's totally naked. Oh! 